March of the Sheen features team-up legends, crazy serialized cards, and draws a parallel to one of the most popular Magic products that we've seen this year. But will it work? Let's check the data. As of the recording of this video, March of the Machine is set to drop in less than two weeks, and we are seeing that this set seems to be highly successful. With tracking every single sold listing on TCG Player, it looks like regular enthusiasts like you and me are eating certain elements of this product up while we seem to be leaving others behind. But there's a variable here that could pit March of the Machine against a common trend that we have seen in the Magic the Gathering market, and most recently with one of the most successful standard product releases in recent memory. So let's take a look at March of the Machine data, see what people like us are buying, how we're spending our money, and then let's speculate. What's going to happen to this product when we get Aftermath, and what will Aftermath do to people trying to spend their money on Magic the Gathering? Well, to get all of this information, we are going to have to take a look at the data, and what we have here is a record of every single sold listing for draft boxes, set boxes, and collector boxes for March of the Machine. And we have some interesting data here, so let's try to break this down from the beginning. Right at the top, you see the summary of all of the sales data. This is the summary of all of these three products that are sold through what might be Magic's most popular online marketplace. And it looks like as of right now, with 11 days to go, March of the Machine is still selling extremely well. It has brought in 419, almost 420, almost $420,000. Gosh, the meme title would have been great. Uh, so, so far, the sales are going well. There's 2,708 boxes sold total and you can see kind of the breakdown of what we're buying as a community but the big question here I always ask is what are we buying and does it differ and here for March in the Sheen it does seem to differ a little bit now with the exclusion of things like jumpstart bundle cases and things of that nature we get to look at just the major three SKUs, and we see collector booster boxes taking up a larger portion of this pie than i anticipated and i think that has something to do with the fact that you're gonna get the planar legends in the you know the halo foils or whatever whatever wizards is naming the new foil in this set and sometimes they skip my mind and the fact that again we see serialized cards in this set now the distribution here matches a lot of what we saw from the brothers war now is it a coincidence since they're serialized cards maybe maybe not we'll be able to continue to kind of follow that so make sure you're subscribed to the channel because i think there's a ton of parallels that we can get into as the set releases and also if you want this data for yourself you can visit me at patreon.com slash hometown tcg support the channel and then all this data is in your hands you can do whatever you want with it but i see a lot of parallels in the collector booster boxes there but as a community we always seem to love the set boxes. And one of the first Magic the Gathering videos I made in 2023 was the fact that I just I just don't get the set box. I just don't get it. And man, does that one keep biting me in the ass. It is tough to have that video out there, but I refuse to let it put any of my takes private. You know what? I said it. I said I didn't get the set box. And us as a community, we love the set box. The most portion or the largest piece of this product pie that's being consumed by regular enthusiasts is the set box. 53.7% of all boxes sold on the platform are the set boxes. Now, I think this is a great mix of products that you can get, you know, for playing your decks. March of the Machine, as I've stated before on this channel, if editor Josh remembers to put a link to that other video, seems to be a very, you know, commander heavy set. Let's just call it what it is. It is out there for commander. And no, in the comment section, if you leave a comment, I don't just hate commander. That is not what I'm saying. I'm saying I don't like them printing standard sets for Commander, you know, specifically like, hey, here's a bunch of Commander cards you must play if you're playing Commander in a standard set. That I, that part I don't understand. But we are eating up set boxes. Set boxes are more than half of the, all the products sold, but set boxes do seem to be a very community friendly product because it's only makes up for 41.4% of the total spend across the SKUs we're tracking here. That means we are buying more and paying a little bit less for this product, which might be a reason why regular enthusiasts are eating this up. Aside from all the pulls you can get, the list slot seeming to have made a great resurgence. List slot seems to be doing really well. There's a lot of fun stuff in there, and you know, the set box is the only thing that really brings that to us right now, so that might be a reason for that. I do want to touch really quick before we kind of make a parallel between this product and what might be the most successful standard release that we've tracked yet. I want to make a 
comment on draft boxes. I say this a lot, but if it's your first time watching, hello, make sure if you like the vibe here, you subscribe. And also the draft box data that we get from TCG player, I don't think is super accurate, right? I do believe that the draft box is probably more popular than what's represented here. We're seeing 8.8% of all magic boxes sold are draft boxes. And again, this, this doesn't serve as like a whole, the whole magic market, just kind of a microcosm and how we interact with the platform. But 8.8 .8 is ridiculously low. I think what we see here is a factor of most people buy draft boxes in a, in a place where they can take them somewhere and do something with them. They don't buy them to get them shipped to their house to either sit on shelves or just sit around their TV and open packs, right? They buy it to draft and actually play Magic the Gathering with their friends. Well, that's tougher to do on TCG Player, right? There's more planning involved. It's much harder than just texting everyone saying, let's meet at the game store, buy a box at the game store, and play Magic. So I really think draft boxes are selling better than we see represented in a lot of this TCG Player data, but it does go to show that if you're looking to play a limited Magic the Gathering, you know, TCG Player is not a place where that community seems to migrate. But all in all, this set is selling well. We see just here, I want to uh, take our attention to the bottom of the chart here, comparing this pre-sale information to Brothers War and Phyrexia All Will Be One. We're a little bit behind pace, but we are on our way. The last week or two of pre-sales always ramp up and we see a ton of product sold. I'll be interested to see if we are going to catch some of these. Now, it's important to note the one pre-sale, the Phyrexia All Will Be One presale is without the complete bundle since there's not a comparable product here. This is the the amount of product sold without the complete bundle. And that's kind of where we see that we can draw a little bit of comparison here. With March on the Machines coming out, we have this what seems to be a mystery product in Aftermath. Now we know Aftermath will be uh, kind of a standalone product. It will be a unique product. It will be standard legal. And we also know it will contain epilogue boosters that are already being dumped by Wizards of the Coast on Amazon, or are they? We'll look into that later this week. Again, make sure you're subscribed. But I think this is another attempt to keep us engaged with March of the Machine, this storyline in this realm, in a different way than we used to. Before we had these blocks, and it gave a community a chance to get involved in a theme or you know a set of Magic the Gathering, and then stay involved for a longer period of time. Because maybe you fell in love with the idea of mirrors or ninja and Mirrodin and Kamigawa, or you just loved Rabbit and the dual lands you want to see the cycle come to fruition so you stayed involved over the original Ravnica block, whatever it might be. Well, we have lost that luster, and it's something that regular enthusiasts have said, hey, I wish we could get back. The idea of a product that comes out, whether it be Phyrexia, All Will Be One, or March of the Machine, and then shortly after, a product in the same vein. For Phyrexia, All Will Be One, we had the complete bundle, which was exactly reprints, but it was in a way that we had never seen before, and it kept us so engaged and hyped in Phyrexia, All Will Be One, and to start, Phyrexia already is a hype set it's a hype theme and a product that we a community loved it kept us engaged and wanting more and we're seeing that kind of trans or we're seeing that property last through multiple months as people are still buying this now we've been on a magic hiatus but you know who knows and march of the machine seems to be making an attempt at something similar we are going to be hyped for march of the machines we're going to see the crossover team up legends we're going to see the the different planar people coming in jumping into the halo foil but then maybe our interest is held just a little bit longer as aftermath is on the way and it gives us something to while we're engaging this product keep that flavor about us keep that idea of march of the machines uh, of of this theme of this storyline fresh in our minds as we look forward to the next product without committing to an entire three set block it's it's been said wizard of the coast won't commit to that again so i think this is interesting but i do think march of the machine is going to do this differently because aftermath so far is such a confusing product the complete bundle before it was released before it was really announced was a confusing product there was a lot of speculation but that was cleared up very quickly and we were excited that we were going to get awesome treatments of cards that we had a chance to fall in love with in the set that cards came out with aftermath is going to be its own standalone thing and the window for aftermath is going to be super small so in effect it seems like we might shrink the march of the machine window give aftermath a small window 
and then go into the crazy spring and summer that are going to be Lord of the Rings and Commander Masters. I think there's a lot of room for failure here, and I think while the complete bundle did really well and kept us engaged and was an awesome product, I'm worried about March of the Machine Aftermath. I really think it's going to detract from a lot of what could be the best magic set of the year this year. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. I really want to know from the regular enthusiasts. I love hearing your guys' stories and saying how you out there are learning to be a better consumer and better engage with these products. Pick some up, leave some behind, whatever it might be. Let me know in the comment section below. Again, thank you so much for hanging out. Until next time, you all know me. My name is Josh, and I hope to see you again around the channel. Make sure you're subbed and all that YouTube-y stuff, and we'll see you later. Goodbye. Come on.